It was pretty hard convincing people to take a chance on a 20 year old that had absolutely no experience in hospitality. We were looking for a prime location right in the center of Dallas and we were looking for a Nobu chef. So how can a 20 year old put that together? Really being able to sell someone on your vision. My name is Francois Rehani. I'm the owner of Bar Stellar and founded the Brightside Foundation in Dallas. My name, Francois, is French. My parents are Persian. They, they grew up in France, so that's where that came from. But I grew up in Mexico and then LA and Dallas, so it's kind of everywhere. I was born in Los Angeles, but when I was about a year old, we moved down to Rosarito, Mexico. Growing up in Mexico, it taught me the values of family and, and really caring about each other. It made me really who I am today. So I was about 12 years old and we moved back to LA. My dad had a heart attack where he ended up losing his entire business. He was not able to work at all. And my mom was taking care of him all the time. So my sister was, was really the mom of the house. I always knew that as fast as I could, I have to step up and provide for them. I actually left high school early to go to college and work at the same time. I randomly thought, why, why don't I try selling cars? I had turned 18, so it was like right at the legal time to be hired. During my first month, I actually ended up being the top salesperson for the entire West Coast. And it proved to myself that I can, I can do whatever I set my mind to. First paycheck I got and I looked at it, I, I literally started crying of happiness. Ever since I was 12 years old, all I, I would really think about is how I can help my family get out of the hole that we were in. When we were living in LA, my parents really never liked it. It was just not their environment. Dallas was like the second biggest growing city in the United States. Me and my dad got on a flight and came out and checked it out for like two days. And the second he just started talking to people, the smile on his face already could tell you he wants to come here. I transferred to SMU and a couple months into it is when I thought of the idea of starting my restaurant. I was so used to so much healthy food in LA and I looked up Pokey on my phone and the second I saw that there was no Pokey, I automatically knew. So Pokey is basically sushi in a bowl. You get to build your own kind of sushi bowl. I literally couldn't sleep just researching what are the tools you need, what books do you have to read, what kind of people are the leaders in that section, and what are they doing right to, to make it successful. I thought, where am I going to get the money? So I started looking for my partners. The only people that told me to do it was my family. Everyone else told me, you know, this is not the right time, you have no experience, you should graduate college first. I mean, literally even the landlord's assistant came out and while I was looking at the space, she, she literally told me to my face, what are you doing here? You're wasting your time. We have eight other offers. Really, no one believed in us because who, who would really believe in a 20-year-old that has no experience? We got packed from day one and just kept getting busier and busier and busier. I mean, it went so fast that I didn't even get a chance to take a step back and be like, wow, did, did this really just happen? It was perfect timing for me to sell my shares of Poke and kind of do my own thing. But I always dreamed about opening a bar and getting it more into the night scene. The second I walked into the old Stellar, I saw, wow, like, there's a lot of potential. This is a wreck right now, and it's gotten the worst reviews in the world, but I, I saw what it could be from the day I bought it to six weeks later. It was a completely new place, a new chef, a new bartender, a completely new menu. But people ask, why why six weeks? Why'd you go so fast? And it's really because I, ha I have no patience. I've been lucky to be so successful in business, but I always knew that I have to somehow give back to the community. About a year ago, I started the Brightside Foundation. The foundation takes the foster kids that are about to turn 18 and age out of foster care, and it helps them really get on track in their life. Yeah, so Dallas Costa, the people that work there are just so passionate about helping these kids. And from the first meeting I went to and the stats that they threw at me, I mean, I literally got goosebumps when I started learning about these foster kids and I found out that 3% of them actually end up graduating college. Then you hear that 50% of them are in jail within two years of aging out. And then 50% of them are also pregnant by the time they're 19 years old. How is that possible? The government tries to help them in some little ways, but it's really not there. We have these little classes for them that helps them write checks, but that, ha that has nothing to do with actually helping out their life. So how can we blame them for going out and selling drugs or, or getting arrested for having a gun or, or being a prostitute even? Because if I was in that situation, to be honest with you, I would have probably done that too. We want to kind of act like a big brother or, or big sister for these foster youth before they turn 18. Because after they turn 18, there's really no track on them. I mean, they're literally just lost out in the street. This is the very beginning of the Brightside Foundation. 
I want to completely change the statistics across the board for, for these foster youth. I never want to hear again that 50% of them went to jail. I want to take that 50% and make it five. The thing here is that this is a problem that can be fixed, right? It's who is going to put themselves out there to actually finally fix this problem that no one has really touched. And that's what I'm here for. 100% of my motivation every day comes from being able to, you know, give back and help these kids. When I wake up in the morning, it's not about how much money we made last night or how packed we were last week. It's about what can I do now to, to help these kids out. Most millennials, we, we give ourselves excuses on why we can't do something now, whether it's starting a business, a nonprofit, giving back to others. We think we're young, we're in college, this is not the time. What we don't understand is now is when we have the power. So when you know that there's a need or you want to start a business and you know that you can do it, there should never be a, oh, if I should do it, maybe none of, there's none of that. It's how can I do that?